Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 114. This episode is the fearless Vanessa Marshall. She's fantastic. Do you ever have a conversation with someone, and then when you're done, you walk away and you're like, wow, I am a better person for having had that interaction. Well, yeah, Vanessa, she's one of those. We talk about how losing her appendix at 10 years old actually comes full circle when she was playing Becky in Scrubs. We talk about how she got into voiceover while doing stand-up. She has crazy stories like recording promos in a nunnery. We talk about different roles that she's played, from Mary Jane to Wonder Woman to Harrison Dula in Star Wars Rebels. We talk about the differences between recording animation versus video games, why she doesn't take on certain roles anymore, as well as how her dad actually influenced some aspects of Harris and Dula, and most importantly, she talks about the importance of loving yourself and how that can actually come through in your voiceover work. She's great. Her stories are great. She's amazing. Let's get right into it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 114, with the phenomenal, almost too talented... Vanessa Marshall. Themes on time. It's way better if it's free as well. Free food tastes better. It's a fact. Oh, exactly. It yeah. Just is. I got well, it. What's so ironic is that you can get on there for, uh, there's a free trial anyway. <laughs> so it's sort of like six of one. I don't know. But yeah. I'm glad I'm finally getting caught up over here. <laughs> there you go. I did the same thing with Disney Plus because it was like Disney uh, Plus, you know, it's like sign up next year. I was like, of course. And then Verizon yeah. was like, hey, you're with Verizon. How about a year for free? I'm like, oh, the same thing I have already for free. Yes, please. Get rid yeah, of this free thing. Genius. I want the other free thing, you know? Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Congrats on that, by the way. Red Sun. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Another honor. Like, wow. Really? Wow. <laughs> I know. I know. You just keep doing it. What's going on? L- lower so your grateful. standards so the rest of us will think you're a human being. That would be cool. <laughs> if you don't mind. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> I actually, I so I have a theory and I need you to either prove it or disprove it. Uh-huh. So. Being from New York, do are people like created in vats, like in the Matrix, to be that talented, or is that something that like you have to work on over time? Uh, no, uh, well, I'm not sure. I'm sure DNA plays a small part, but I yeah. think luck and timing uh, are are also part of it. I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> now, it, now, is that luck and timing that's injected into the into the tanks? Obviously. Uh, yes of course okay. yes Whew, man. yeah i was actually what's crazy is i was born in los angeles but i went to school back east and i feel like i became uh, a full human being on the east coast so as far as i'm concerned i am from new york yeah <laughs> uh, and my family apparently uh used to live in uh west nyack and the bronx so oh there you go yeah so so they're i guess i'm old school new york Mark, but uh, I, I I love it out there. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe there is some water. Who knows? <laughs> I bet you know. What? I bet it is. I bet it is. The Bronx specifically as well. I mean, you got Jennifer Lopez. You got Ahmed Best. You oh got my gosh, now Ahmed. Vanessa Marshall. I love that guy. I know. I love, Isn't he I the loved greatest? Your interview with him. I you loved did not him. listen to that. Get yeah. out of here. Stop Are it. You no. Hell yeah. No. Stop it. A hundred grand. I am not blushing grand. at all. <laughs> Please. Yeah, no, well, I love him and I see him out hiking. He lives near me oh, and I see him with his son and, you know, so, and his wife and like, we, I, we're neighbors. It's crazy. Oh, nice. I mean, he yeah. is literally the best. Literally <laughs> in every way. Yeah. I love that guy. Same, same. I can't believe he came on my show. What is wrong with him? And you as well. What is happening right now? My you God. know, are you from the East Coast, too? Because... <laughs> well, listen, I was born in North Carolina, but I was raised in Southern Florida. You but... and uh, Stephen Colbert, right? I mean, yeah, that's what I think. You know, He's from North Carolina, isn't he? he or is well, it South Carolina? I think he's South Carolina, but I'll still take it. Well, look, you know. the Carolinas <laughs> were good. Either one. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that. You know, we did something. <laughs> Colbert and me. So there's a very tiny gap between us, which is really nice. 
Uh, exactly. We're, we're kind of neighbors, really. The Florida variable. Other than yeah. that, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're mental neighbors. That's exactly. what's going on. Exactly. Yeah, you get it. You member. <laughs> awesome yeah so i'm wondering so you've got the new york side you've got the la side was was performing something that you always wanted to do because i know i mean you may come from greatness as well i mean i'm not saying but you can't like was that something that was encouraged or something you're like i want to do this well i watched my mom um sort of pursue acting yeah she uh was on all sorts of really cool shows when i was a kid you know, the rockford files and the love boat and mm-hmm. um even the wonder woman show with linda carter which is worth googling if you if you have the time because the outfits alone are enough to make <laughs> you weep with joy yep but yep, yep. um yeah so i was familiar with the business of acting um but i also participated in theater and and studied theater and I loved writing and I basically just love stories and storytelling and whether that occurred in a theater or in a movie theater or even on television mm-hmm. all of those things uh, everything to me and uh, when I went to college I realized wow I really enjoy acting but I don't really necessarily love the business of it oh, and yes. uh, so I, I was at Rhodes because I felt like I had the the talent uh, mm-hmm. to do it, but it was really more the storytelling and the healing from storytelling that interested me. So it was a bit of a conflict. Yes. And, uh, yeah. So strangely, when I discovered voiceover for me, it seems like being invisible there allows one to really pursue the, the, the very nature of, um, of what entertainment is about. Truly. I, I, and I'm just like being a masked person so that I was able to play Irwin on the grim adventures, of and Mandy, who looks like oh. Urkel. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I currently play Invictus on a, a cartoon called Final Space. Who talks like this? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, my only limitations are my imagination. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I grew up in the industry and um, I kind of felt like it took my mom away from me. And so I didn't exactly want to run into uh, the same business but i love the storytelling and i i love the sense of family that i get yeah when, uh, when i'm part of a cast um maybe as in with star wars rebels or with marvel's guardians of the galaxy i played gamora i i truly love uh those cast members and and where you have sort of these indelible bonds and that that aspect of it really really appealed to me maybe i'm an only child so sure I, I, came to acquire all these new brothers and sisters. So my little tribe of voiceover actors, I love them all. There you so, go. There you go. Yeah. Been an interesting, an interesting journey. Right. But see, you're also, you have the, you're a chameleon. I'm just going to say it. You're a chameleon. <laughs> and I don't just mean that in your voice because I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Let's just throw that out there. Obviously. Okay. But one of the things you, you ever watch an old movie and then you're like, all right, this is cool. And then somebody comes up and you're like, oh, That's from that. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. (laughs) Yes, that happens a lot. Yeah, listen. So you were, one, you've rocked every hairstyle ever. Pretty much. I mean, rocked in the sense that, like, you killed it in every one. There wasn't one of, like, that one just didn't really work. All of them. Which, who can do that? No one. No one. (laughs) Ridiculous. But you were in Scrubs. Oh, man. That was was the highlight of my life. Dude. First off, doesn't even look like you. How do you... I mean, okay. I just talk to me. Uh, that What's was going my on? favorite. I went into that audition wearing my Incredible Hulk t-shirt. Oh, yes. And I murdered that audition. <laughs> I bet I you did. Like, I was like, this is mine. Right. And <laughs> I, I was like, I play basketball with Zach Braff. And right. And Doc plays on. I'm like, it's it's on. I played basketball in high school. I was like, you guys are dead. It's your yeah. funeral. <laughs> and uh, I just, I don't know where I got this confidence, but uh, I just went in there and, and had the best time ever. And then the fact that I played Becky... You did, the, yeah. The uh, medical intern who's constantly making Zach's character's <laughs> life horrible as he's pursuing Sarah Chalk as yeah. she's also pursuing Sarah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so good. It was, it was very, very funny, and um, I was so excited because I thought, ah, cool, it's a recurring character. Here we go. Now I'm, I can finally get this thing going. Yeah. As the on-camera career, 
And uh, then every episode in the first season ran long. Oh, we're going to have her back next. Oh, it ran too long. We're going to have her back. And then she never came back because I guess things got so crazy. Oh. But, but it, either which way, I had the best time. And Bill Lawrence was an amazing guy. And everyone was so friendly. And um, ironically, it was filmed at a an empty hospital building what? Uh, here in Los Angeles. Yeah. And it's actually where I went as a 10-year-old. Uh, with an appendix that was about to burst. Oh, no. So my, my life, yes, my life came full, full circle. <laughs> um, I'll never forget it. I, the Lakers were in the playoffs, and they wheeled me into this hospital over on Riverside uh, Drive here in uh, Los Angeles, and my mom wouldn't come in the emergency room until the Lakers won the playoffs. <laughs> and so that building and the Lakers have sort of a, a special right. <laughs> You're bonded. Place, my heart, <laughs> um, very strange place. But um, anyway, so to, to go there and then uh, make comedy out of that, uh, era, just it was a, a delight. I had so much fun. I just loved it. Yeah. Oh, man. At 10, your appendix? That's one of my like oh, yeah. random fears. Because it's the worst. Oh, oh yep. man. I had to have that nuts. thing out. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. was the recovery no, long? Do you remember? Well, that? I remember that I couldn't laugh. Oh, and... that's the worst. Yeah, and I had a male nurse who um, who was very soft spoken, and oh, no. somehow he was like hilarious. <laughs> like he almost looked like Baby Huey or something. And oh, uh, I was like, "Please God, let me not laugh at this guy." Like he was he was <laughs> hilarious. Um, so that was the hardest part was not laughing. Oh my God! Trying to sort of you know let my uh, abdomen heal without you know the uh, muscle movements of you know that are involved with creating sounds such as laughter <laughs> yeah but, oh, uh, man. that was that that i remember being a bit of a pain but i can imagine I can yeah imagine, especially as a kid and oh man that's yeah. just mean why would they have the baby huey nurse take care of you come on it was What's really weird on? man i gotta tell you i was like what whose life is this what is <laughs> happening like you know yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be back and play a very masculine woman you just wait. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so on, so on baby camera, Hue, baby Huey's cousin or something. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. What was was on camera like the first thing that you were kind of jumping into? You're like, that's going to be my first in. Well, I actually preferred theater. Um, I Ooh. went to Princeton for undergrad, and I wrote no plays there and acted in plays there. And um, then a friend of mine, his name is Matt Rausch. He uh, went to uh, went on to be on shows like Banshee, um, and yeah. uh, I think he's on Madam President currently. But anyway, he needed a scene partner uh, to uh, apply to NYU Graduate School for acting uh, to get a master's in acting, and I had no interest in doing that. But he needed a scene partner, so I went in with him. And of the two thousand people who applied, only twenty got in. And Ooh. I was one of the one who was accepted, and Matt wow. didn't get accepted. So, oh, no. Yeah, that was not cool. So you haven't um, spoken since? Well, <laughs> luckily, he's been incredibly successful. So Yeah, I yeah, it worked out. <laughs> he doesn't harbor any resentment, uh, as far as I know. But, right, right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, that was that was a really educational experience. Billy Crudup was in my class, and what? Robin Weigert was in my class, and uh, Kevin Carroll Dude, um, all these all these amazing actors uh, were uh, in graduate school with me for three years, but um, anyway, so uh, that's sort of how that went. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. What? So what is I like? I know people who've got theater degrees as well. What is graduate school for theater? Like, how does that build up? Well, it, it's a thirteen-hour day. Oh man! And um, you're studying all sorts of things in the morning, anything from physical movement to vocal exercises to singing, um, to clowning. You learn how to Ooh. do. Do you have clown. a clown name? Uh, I, I don't think so. I'm sure people <laughs> had one for me. Um, we had uh, improv <laughs> classes, um, elocution classes. And then we would rehearse scenes and, or, you know, like scene study. Then we would study dialects. And then from seven to 10 at night, we would rehearse plays that we were then to perform. And that went on for three years. Wow. And uh, yeah, I remember I would get up at 6 a.m., I would run five miles, go As to class. Do. And I don't understand. I don't know what. 
<laughs> I have no idea how that happened. Um, I was probably the most productive I've ever been in my entire life in that time period. It was insanity. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we had a great time. We learned a lot, bonded. And, um, so I got to play Masha and all these amazing roles and, and sort of Shakespeare or Chekhov and, wow. um, different Commedia dell'arte things and work with amazing directors. And, um, Zelda Fitch Handler was running the school at that point. And, um, uh, they, I just, it was, it was a, a really magical experience for three years. And then I came back to Los Angeles and I thought, well, with a master's in acting, I suppose I should pursue this. Uh, <laughs> Might as well. And I remember <laughs> going to these auditions and saying, well, you know, worked with Livio Trulli. Right, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, but you're three years older. And um, you're basically right. at 23. They were like, you're an old bag. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was like, but but I. <laughs> but but Princeton, it, listen. Yeah, no, they did not care. They were just like, nope, bye. Yeah, it was it was it was very strange. So I, I, I took shelter in the world of comedy, and um, I joined the Acme Comedy Theater and did sketch Ooh. comedy and uh, wrote a couple one woman shows. Um, oh, wow. and I had a ball, um, dude. That stuff, sort of a la Lily Tomlin uh, character uh, show called uh, the Cyber Dating Game, where I played all sorts of. Um, different roles and interacted with previously recorded footage of stuff and oh, oh it was God. all it was all a load of fun and um that sounds amazing eventually i came to discover the voiceover stuff um and uh that just made a ton more sense than um trying to convince people that i think they were referred to ca on camera actors as camera meat oh okay and, uh, <laughs> i was like but i'm a storyteller <laughs> <laughs> Zelda Fitch Handler compared me to a shaman. I, yeah. You know, like, it just, like, it just yes, didn't really, shaman we weren't, it, it, yeah, they, they just did not, it didn't translate. So anyway, sure. um, I, I eventually got into the world of voiceover and it just was like, that was that. Sure. That's nuts. And one woman shows one, it sounds like you did the most difficult one woman show. <laughs> Usually one woman shows is like a person talking about something and then they can add beats into it. But you're like, I'm going to play a lot of me in a lot of different me's. Yeah, I, I created all sorts of characters. Uh, the second one woman show I did um, was really my 45 minute stand up set. Ooh, uh, you did the stand up? What? Yeah, then I also did stand up comedy, which was awesome. So much fun. Stand up yeah. is like... I mean, you already lost your appendix at ten, so like fear is not a thing anymore. Yeah, well, but seriously, what are what are, what's the audience? Yeah, do, dude, please. At that point? I mean, you know, burst another right. organ. Come yeah. on, please. that's please. I mean, I know people who've lost gallbladder. Yeah, I, yeah. Who needs those? I think, yeah, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, stand up, stand up sounds. I there's been times when I'm like maybe, but then I'm like no. That's just so like where do you feel that stand up has like a theater kind of aspect to it because you have that on stage sort of thing but I don't know it just feels like a different sort of animal to me. I think that it's a stand up comics job to make sense of the world. Ooh, I like that a lot. And when the world doesn't make sense, there's just nothing but material. Yeah. I agree and with that. And in that regard, it, it was always very healing. <laughs> right, you just get it all out. Well, we work it out together. Ooh. Uh, yeah, because at a certain point, you just have to laugh. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. You start sobbing. So <laughs> you might as well laugh, right? I agree. I yeah. agree. You can just yeah. hold the mirror up be like, this is ridiculous, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How long did you do that for? Uh, Maybe like five or six years, something. Oh, my God. Uh, maybe more. That's so long. Yeah, and it's funny. My best friend today... Uh, I met her doing stand-up comedy way back when. Really? And, uh, it's crazy. Now she's a single mom, and um, she works at Disney and, uh, you know, for ABC, and she works on uh, creating promos, which I have actually voiced. So we oh, end up, sweet. We end up being colleagues, and uh, it's just so funny how, how life works out. I never would have thought. I mean, to be involved with a Disney uh, right. franchise is such an honor. And, um, you know, we love to drive down to Disneyland together and her daughter loves it. And I don't know, I, I, there, that's another, another tribe, my stand up comedy tribe. <laughs> I bet it's like you're in yeah. the trenches with that one. And there's, yeah. there's like a language I feel like 
from somebody from the outside, obviously, is that like anyone who goes up there on stage and does a set, you have this kind of instant built in camaraderie of like, I get that. I, yeah, I, I know that. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. Do you remember your first set? Uh, yeah, I do. I had a blast. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. good. I love Th- that it. explains why you did it for so long. Because if it went I, to bombed, it might have well, been a little different. I don't know. I had so much fun. I don't know. I I didn't even think about bombing. It wasn't even a concern. I thought, you know, let's just have fun. And, and I had fun. And, and I I think everyone else did, too. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't really go wrong. Um, well, I guess you could. But, yeah. <laughs> um, you try not to. It's not the objective. Yeah. I guess I was fearless. Good. And didn't really care how it went. I just was happy to be there. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to think the appendix is where fear comes from. See, George Lucas had his car accident. Right. And from then on, he was a master. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's something about these near-death experiences where you come out the other end and say, not much scares me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do we f- – you know what? This is a business. Vanessa, let's do this. Let's find a way <laughs> to facilitate – Near-death experiences for people. There you go. To become their best selves. What do you think? Well, I, you know, I guess when you rise out of adversity and, and decide to be creative instead of full of self-pity yep. or, or even self-loathing, I think that's the hero's journey there, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, yeah. To- I totally agree. And yeah. it makes for better stories later on. Exactly. So did you, did you do stand-up and then the one-woman shows or the other way around? Um, I did... One, actually, I think I did stand up the one person show, a ton of improv comedy, and then a ton of stand up, and then the second one woman show. Oh, okay. So it was a bit of a a mixed bag there. Yeah, and was this yeah. all the while pursuing like on camera stuff as well? Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a lot of things. Well, I think when you <laughs> are waiting for the phone to ring, whether it's an audition yeah. or a job. It's always fun to keep life interesting and, and make new friends and, and learn new things. And with that in mind, I think that's that's uh, why I decided to do the stand-up and the sketch. And, and Acme Comedy Theater, I was in their Sunday night performing company, and I had the best time. Man, I laughed so hard. Oh, it was yeah. very, very healthy. <laughs> yeah, it's just good for you. It's good to yeah. laugh. <laughs> and and escapism is like the greatest thing in the world. So any chance you can get to, but also I think you're one of those people in the same vein as Ahmed, like you're what I call like true creatives. When it's like you just have this innate like I have to get this out, and mm. then you just look for any avenue that you can. It's mm. all it's all output, but it's like I just have this. I have to funnel it somewhere. So it would make sense that you'd look for yeah. any sort of avenue you could. I think you may make a good point there. I when I was in high school, I was a sculptor. What? And yeah, that's and, uh, different than the other well, things you said. It's another form of expression. I honestly, yeah. I think it's exactly what you're describing is that it was something that I couldn't really put into words. Um, but I, my sculpture was basically, I would take garbage and recontextualize it oh, to so create cool. art, not yeah. literally rotting garbage, yeah, but sometimes I, items that other people had deemed as trash. Right. And I would, um, gather them, recontextualize them and, and create art. And I think that's actually why I got into Princeton, uh, was oh. because of my sculpture, which I then never went on to do anything with. So, <laughs> Without um, getting I'm, in the I door. They're, I hope they're thrilled for taking that chance on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It worked out. There, there's gotta be well, one professor that's like, Vanessa was supposed to be a sculptor. What is this? <laughs> well, it's interesting. I mean, but I do think that, um, in high school, I think that was the best way I could express myself. Yeah. And then as I go as an artist and a writer and a performer, uh, I was able to find my voice a little more freely and I could do more than just use my hands to create messages or tell stories. So I, I think it does make sense. And it's a lot like what you're describing, that there's this sort of drive to communicate. And uh, the drive is the same, the the different uh, means of communication there, you know, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Yeah remains is that drive so i think you make a good point now that's interesting as well because i think about like i don't know it's it's like there's talent and there's skill right like a lot of that can be built and taught different techniques but the drive is something that i feel like is almost inherent 
You know, like yeah. you, you just have it there. And I feel like a lot of people that have gone on to be successful or achieve their dreams in any sense has that already there. And it's about trying to get it in certain ways. So I, I love that sculpture of all things. And I love I know, the medium. Right? Another person's treasure Crazy. is one's treasure. And, ah, seeing the beauty in things. I'm pick- yeah. I'm picking up what you're laying down. See? I like it. I like it. <laughs> I relate to you, Vanessa. Michael. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. So you're doing at, all at the same time. You're doing yep. one woman shows. You're doing stand up. You're pursuing on camera stuff. You're yep. doing improv as well. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, hmm, let's do voiceover as well. Well, the uh, the voiceover agency that I'm currently at right now, mm-hmm. they saw me performing in one of the uh, shows Ooh, that I second nice. one person show, and I do all sorts of in my storytelling. I create all sorts of characters in that as well. People from my life, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, I asked, uh, you know, what would it take to get into voiceover? And they thought, well, you know, you might as well try doing animation. Clearly you have a knack for different dialects and this and that. Right. Um, and they brought me into the voiceover agency to audition and, uh, I did. And then I signed with them and I've been with them ever since. Wow. What kind, yeah. what kind of audition was it? They're like, do an old woman. Now do a dog. Now do no, this. No, they had me read a few pieces of voiceover copy. And then nice. they told me to prepare in advance sort of a medley of characters. Oh, wow. And I said, okay. Yeah. So I, <laughs> sure. I did about 40 different voices. I created funny lines for 40 different Good voices. Good Lord. Yeah, it w- they literally looked at me like completely insane. Yeah. <laughs> and they thought, you know, this kid just might book work because yeah, may- maybe, maybe because that's <laughs> nuts. Yeah, I don't know that the voiceover copy that I read was very good. <laughs> that's um, that's I'm part of the test. Sure it, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Uh, but I took a billion voiceover classes. I still take voiceover classes, and yeah, um, you know, because the the reads are constantly shifting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, how things are advertised, et cetera. And there are so many different genres within voiceover. You've got movie trailers, narration, radio liners, animation, video games, uh, TV commercials, podcasts, or, you know, these um, uh, Pandora radio commercials. Like there's all sorts of different uh, modes of advertising. So there's always classes. There are mocap classes for video games. There's, it's just endless. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway, so that's how I got signed at the voiceover agency, and I'm I'm always happy to learn more and more, and I just keep signing up for those classes. So uh, it keeps me feeling uh, sort of vibrant and fit. I mean, you can't go to the gym once and be like, well, that's done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, kind of have to go maybe three times a week. You got to kind of keep things moving there. And uh, if you're lucky and get on a series, then you're you're in the class doing the the job you know you're you're going to stay limber by by working but sometimes there are times in between uh you know there's hiatus or whatever it's always fun to get into a workout group and and stay nimble yeah i also love the idea that the copy for the audition wasn't good a la garbage and then you took 40 different voices and turned into art there's a there's a through line here There's a through line, ladies and gentlemen. When life gives you lemons. (laughs) Make sculptures. Do it. (laughs) 40 points. Good Lord. You know why they had that look on their face? It's because you just rendered half their clientele like meaningless. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I think they thought I was pretty nice. Which is the best kind. (laughs) (laughs) Some with a clicker writing down the voices like, good Lord, 25, 26? Oh, I, I just, I just wanted to make laugh. Who cares? There you go. That's what it's yeah. about, man. You got to go out there Pretty and lay it out and like make an impression. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Do you, so do you remember your first voiceover gig then? Um, I want to say it was for a healthcare company. Oh, nice. Um, and I think it was. Please say the side effects of something. Please say the side effects of something. No, I oh, don't. I think. So close. No, no. I think it was, um somewhere in the midwest oh. so it wasn't like a, a national spot of any kind um and uh it sort of came and went but it was a miracle i was really happy to have booked something yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> i remember amazing. my first 
uh, role on a cartoon uh, was on uh, one of the Batman cartoons or Young Justice. Oh. Um, Dude. Or no, Justice League, forgive me. Um, yeah, no big deal. I've heard of that. And uh, yeah, um, it was uh, I played Coral Lipstick Lady number three. <laughs> Beat and, the uh, age old with such, role. such style and panache yes exactly I'm pretty sure i nailed it uh i think so too yeah but but that was that was really really fun uh to go over there and and see the kids play at the mic and and learn and sort of humbly enter enter the ring yeah <laughs> yeah andrea romano was directing and what um, oh uh, legend I know. Yeah. With Andrea Romano? I believe it was Justice League, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Dude. Speak of no, graduate you're... school, working with yeah. her. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And I took her uh, animation class. It was one of the best I've taken. Oh, what? And Rob Paulson came in. Oh, and, uh, the best. He said, every time he goes in front of the microphone, he says the following thing to himself Please help me get out of the way. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Never forgot that. Yeah, it, it's yeah. interesting as well from like Andrew's perspective, you know, it's it's that's like the hardest part is mm -hmm. to not go for the thing that you, it's like doing improv and then not like sitting on that joke to throw it out. You know? Right. You know, right. Yep. Being yeah. in the moment. Being in the moment. Exactly. Yes. And yeah. so. Did, yeah, there you go. <laughs> did, did you find that it was like because you auditioned to do voiceover work, right? Was there mm -hmm. was there a learning curve? to start doing voiceover where, cause it's like, it's like a different color paint. Like you're still painting, you're still acting, but it's a different kind of thing. It's a very different kind of thing. And, um, what I came to learn is that the microphone was more like someone's ear and, oh. and acting in front of someone at that close proximity, it was as if their eyes were closed and it was my job to paint the picture for them oh, in like their that. ear. And, yeah. uh, so it's a very, it's a, I felt like I was creating soundscapes for the mind. Mm -hmm. And so, especially as, um, I came to start auditioning more, everyone has home studios now. Right. When I would create my auditions, I would keep that in mind that I was creating soundscapes for the listener's imagination that even if I didn't book the role, they would have a, a fun time listening to the world I was about to create and then just let it go. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so you sort of direct a little three-minute snippet of, or uh, thirty-second, whatever it is, you know, and it depends on the audition. But uh, to create a respectable world that takes the listener on a journey, and then push send, and then forget it. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's really the only way to survive the yep. the, the game of acting is like do your best out the yep. gate. Because if you don't do your best, you're gonna kill yourself later on. Be like, oh, I could have done this. I could have done that. It's like not if you did your best. You did right. your best. That is what yeah. you had, and then you can yeah. let it go. Yeah, man, yeah. that's yeah. that's. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, voiceover because like, it's imagining like you have the gig. Be like, all right, here's the take, essentially, yeah. as opposed to the audition, and then be like, well, that's that. Yep. It's a healthy uh, like disconnect that you can yeah. Have. So what? So then, what does your what does your home uh, studio look like now? What kind of stuff are you running? Um, just the basic requirements you know um yeah the, the the mic the cable the preamp my computer uh nice yeah uh there's nothing particularly special i mean it's all studio grade and and professional and you know uh i do stuff straight to broadcast and Sweet. so yeah yeah have you had to record in a hotel room with a ton of pillows in a closet yet oh a uh, ton yeah. yeah 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 one time i uh was traveling in italy and at the time I was doing a lot of promos for HGTV and I had to pull over into a nunnery <laughs> and record a promo in the ladies room at the nunnery. That's and I'm not amazing. really sure why, but there was a bidet <laughs> and I was like, all right, ladies, look, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever I don't know what you got going on here. here. And I just, <laughs> I just need to do this little spreadsheet TV. I'll be right back. Um, <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm uh, not the, gonna the tiles were a little echoey and what have you, but you know, we we got by. There um, you go. You made it. You work. make it work. You just again, you improvise. <laughs> <laughs> like today, you just 
do what you got to do. That's right. You know, a nunnery and a bidet. That that's the title of a special, really. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> it's always around. I couldn't believe it. I I would. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but I had to do what I had to do. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, so when you're doing, because I know you did, you were MJ in the Spectacular Spider-Man for a good run, which was amazing. But you said you're a fan of comics and stuff growing up. It's so like, how do you even contextualize something like that? This is a this is a big deal. So like, where do you, oh, when you're yeah. reading it, you don't have her voice. You know what I mean? No, but I felt her spirit. I felt Ooh, nice. her. Like you understood. Yeah, I just, I understood her maturity. I felt like she was more mature than her peers to a certain extent. And oh. I mean, um, in the sense that she knew how to support Peter. Right. To let him become who he needed to be. Sure. Not that, you know, she had her own dreams and, and aspirations as well. But sometimes it takes a lot of humility to, to let someone you care about discover who they are. Totally. It takes a Rather strong person to be that. an anchor as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I um, yeah, that was a runner. I, I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you killed it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> killed it. But I, yeah, I always wonder stuff like that, like with something like that. But that makes a lot of sense that you attack it less from like the idea of it more like come from the character's essence and then funnel it through right. you into the thing. Especially with these superhero stories, there, there are so many people have played so many versions of them right. i think it's important to find whatever the archetype is and then bring out whatever version of that lives uh in me or in you or you know whoever is uh, stepping up to the microphone and and again get out of the way <laughs> right right and just play and have fun um and uh, that that was a great cast. Greg Weissman was amazing. Yeah, uh, he cast a lot of really talented people. That was a wonderful show. It came through huh. on, on this side of the TV faux show. No, oh, that's awesome. It was pretty good, <laughs> pretty good. And then I remember you were in Kingdom Hearts. You got to play oh my Nala. Gosh. I mean, wow, dude. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, that, I mean that's why I'm here. I'm like, hey, remember that cool thing you did? Boom. Yeah. Look at that. Boom. You did that. And I liked I it. I remember that. I remember that. Was that another kind of thing? Like, yeah, because how do you, do you go back and listen to other versions or do you, you like, you can't because you got to do your own thing. Like, where's the, where's the line there when you're doing something like that? Well, you know, it's interesting. When I got the part of Gamora in. Yes. Um, Amazing as well, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. That, they said that they wanted feel alikes, not sound alikes. Oh, okay. So I thought that was a really interesting way to put it, that they didn't want me to sound like Zoe Saldana. They wanted me to feel like her. Right. And that's very liberating. And, and I, I think that kind of makes the imagination sort of excited about what, what could that be. And then and then magic happens, you know. I mean, um, I, I think that any of us try to sound exactly like our counterparts in the on-camera world. Mm hmm but I think we got the essence of who they were, and uh, once again, that was sort of liberating. Yeah, I bet. Because you, it's almost like you have more room to play. And kind yeah, of like you're not as constrained. Where you're like, okay, well, I, I get Nala, it. Yeah, I think with Nala, it was sort of the same thing. Oh, um, that makes sense. To kind of feel like her essence, which was very nurturing, and um, I don't know. I I I just man, I I love being directed too because wherever they want us to go, that's where we go, and it's just so much fun. Yeah, I find yeah. I find that as well. I enjoy direction. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's uh, I remember Jamie Fox one time about like working on Django Unchained, and how uh, like you know how perfect Quentin Tarantino is, and it's like he needs everything to be exactly as he imagined it, and wow. he was on Stern. That's what it was. And he was like, do you, oh, okay. he's like, do you like that? And Jamie Foxx was like, oh, yes. He's like, you want that net where you're like, if we're jumping off a cliff, you want to jump it off a cliff and that they got you. It's like this uh -huh. weird sort of thing. But then there are other people that feel a little differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you find that like when you're doing animation versus like video games, do you attack it differently? Because they're different mediums, but I feel like how similar are they on your side of it? Well, they're very similar in front of the microphone. Mm -hmm. However, they're different in the following way. One, there's usually a cast of people around me when I'm doing animation. Ooh. So it, it's much more like team effort. 
and we all get the, the script in advance and oh, we get to study know. our lines and come up with all sorts of playful ways that we can make things work. When I do a video game, I usually, it's usually called something like Cocoa Puffs or, you know, right, I mean, yeah. I <laughs> what I'm doing. Sure. And then I get there and then find out it's, you know, some huge franchise and then I, oh my goodness. Right. But due to legal reasons, they can't give us stuff in advance. And sure. so I'm by myself in the booth doing three takes in a row of a line that will eventually play with another character as if we were there at the same time. Right. So I am required really to um, use my imagination a lot more in terms of the situation, uh, how that other act might say that line uh, that, that precedes the one I'm saying, or if I'm talking to the player, um, it's the player that I need to communicate, you know, what their next move is, or um, I have to be an ally for them or an adversary. Um, but it's more of a solo mission for mm. me as a performer, um, whereas it's so much easier to be in the moment. Like when we would do the Guardians of the Galaxy records, we had a ball. I mean, I didn't even know how I, it was. It wasn't even like work. We were <laughs> laughing. Oh, man, it was just like an orchestra. And I was on bass. And, you know, you had these, you know, complete fools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we would break dance and. Yeah, like it, get it. And then suddenly, you know, the animation director uh, would, you know, reel us back in, and then we were able to just nail it. And uh, I don't know, every everything kind of fell together in a way that that would not happen. You can't act like that at a video game job. You have to really uh, just get through your lines and and uh, give them three various choices. You know, that are you know. Um, depending on how they, how the other person might say the line, they need a slow, medium and fast version or, right. you know, a happy, sad and angry version or that's like the most basic translation. But, um, anyway, so it, you just use different muscles. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't know that. It sounds mm -hmm. like with video games, you're like a cog in a wheel that eventually make the machine. Whereas like with animation, you're like a oh, different chefs in this kitchen. You're like, Oh, we're doing this. And it's like a, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. more, I guess in your face collaborative, I guess, because it's, it's all collaborative, everyone doing everything, but you get to like kind of play around. That's cool. I think that makes better stuff when you yeah. have that sort of thing, I, you know? I Yeah, Rebels was like that. We were always together uh, for Star Wars Rebels. It was so much fun. That's so um, cool. Yeah. It, again, sort of like uh, another little orchestra pit there where we were <laughs> all creating this wacky symphony. Some parts majestic, some parts heartbreaking, some parts hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Man, do you find that, like, uh, working in video games, because I've noticed that a lot of stuff, like, is starting to become even more, like, mocap-centric for video games as opposed to, like, yeah. just VO in the booth. Have you done mocap before? Um, I have a little bit. Uh, yeah. Not as much as some of the other things that I've done. Sure. Sure. Yeah, um, it's a it's more like on camera acting in the sense that you have to memorize uh, all your lines first of all. <laughs> oh yeah, that, I yeah. never put two and two together. Yeah, Whoa. I think you put on that mocap suit and then you have to be off book because you can't read your script. Oh man. So, yeah, it's very different, very very different. It, it utilizes the skills that uh, I acquired in um, acting right uh, school. But, um, yeah, it's been a while, so it's it's far easier in a way to go to a job and have your script in front of you and yeah <laughs> and create sure. create those soundscapes without having to move my body around <laughs> right, right, yeah. but in the same sense, it's like it's a different thing that's like easily as difficult but hard to compare because right. it's different thing, yeah, mhm, mm pretty amazing so yep. what what kind of stuff were you into as a kid growing up that now like you're in. I mean, come on, dude. Well, Star Wars for sure. That's your Star jam. Star Wars is probably the 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 biggest one. I remember Same. seeing the first film. My aunt took me uh, with my cousins to see this space opera, oh. and we all were like, oh, whatever." Yeah. <laughs> come on, mom. Ah, you know. And then we got in there, and from the moment the Star Destroyer went across, we did not say a word. It just took our breath away, and that was that. Yeah. You know, our lives were forever changed. I know mine was. And as far as like stories being told, 
in the universe, that to me was just one of the best. And it, it just grabbed me by the throat. And that was that. <laughs> yeah. And, and stole my heart. And I've just been a fan ever since. So to be involved with the Lucasfilm franchise is absolutely beyond. I never thought. And you yet know. you did. And not just once. Because you, you were in Jedi Knight. I know you were right. Jan Ors. Ors. Yeah. Huge. I mean, dude, what a role. And in Star Wars. Yeah. You know, pretty good. Yeah. You weren't yeah. Coral Lipstick Woman number three in Star Wars, so well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> M- moving on up already. I know you got to be a Jedi Master in KOTOR 2. Yes. One of the greatest uh-huh. Star Wars games of all time, if I do yeah. say so myself. On a slight other thing, another one of my favorite roles I've done, I love the Ratchet and Clank series. Oh, thank you. It's like you. one of my so all-time favorites. Dude, you're you're in Dr. Nefarious's computer. Ah. Uh, that, yes, and uh the Pepper Potts, I think was that her name? Yes. Oh, the, it's so good. The newscaster. Yeah. I had so much fun doing that. Yeah, that that was great. I'm so glad they made a movie out of it. That was hilarious. I know. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I I love also the like I love talking to like over artists and stuff like that cuz you're too talented really it's disgusting so stop it but also you can do things that like i think rob paulson has said like i get to play roles that i would never be casted in on camera and That's right. you brought yeah. up you brought up Irwin, yeah in the grim adventures of billy and mandy and i didn't know that was you and then i found out and i was like this is the greatest thing ever so right isn't that crazy that's you that, yeah it it it, it it never would happen again. Uh, right. <laughs> because, well, the reason why I don't I don't read for roles that are other than Caucasian. Right. I, I pass on them because I don't I don't. If my friends were sent copy for Caucasian roles, mm-hmm. my friends who are Asian or you know African American or you know from anywhere that, that for they get sort of pigeonholed into these places of like, oh, they get the urban announcer. It's like, no, why don't you get the human being? Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and totally. I never read for Irwin had I known. Right. Um, when I was handed the uh, image. It it was sort of a stick figure. It was, you know, it didn't, it looked like a kid. It didn't look right. like. You just knew it was a little boy. Yeah, exactly. And um, so I, I did a voice for a little boy that looked, he looked, looked kind of nerdy to me. Yeah. What's up, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then when I saw the cartoon, I, I was like, oh my goodness, whoops. Um, but luckily, you know, no one faulted me for that. But oftentimes I'll get sent a uh, copy for um, Indian females or Asian females. And I just, I'm cool with casting going the other direction. Yeah, totally. Um, but, uh, you know, like David Oyello, yeah. uh, got oh. Alice in yes. Rebels, that that's fine. Um, but, uh, I, un, until there's more equality and diversity, I kind of refrain from that. So it'll never happen again because yeah. <laughs> I was auditioned for that role. And I've passed on a lot of things for that reason. And I've referred them to other actors who should be reading on it. Hell yeah. I love anyway. that. That's amazing. I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Doing your part. I love uh, it. Well, I mean, if again, if if people were able to read for human beings and not be sort of typecast, then I wouldn't. Yeah, you know, that, there would be a wealth of opportunity for all of us. So I totally agree. Totally agree. Mm-hmm. So you go from that. You've worked for. You've worked on a lot of Cartoon Network shows, which is amazing. Obviously, I grew up on it. Pretty cool. Uh, but yeah. I mean, dude, you were you were Hera. Kind of crazy. I mean, come on. That's like. <laughs> It's one of those things that, like, Rebels was one of those that, like, Clone Wars really struck a chord, and I feel like Rebels struck a different chord that, like, people mm-hmm. weren't necessarily expecting. Yeah. You know I and, mean? like, and Hera's, like, the, she's, like, the good Star Wars mom. You know, it's, uh, like, <laughs> went far on, like, I'm curious, yeah. so what was that audition like? Because you, uh, there's no way you knew it was Star Wars when you auditioned for it. It felt like Star Wars to me. Yeah. Um, And I wasn't sure what it was. Because the project was called Wolf, and um, that makes sense. Oh, but they did, make, they did make reference to um, light swords and ooh, nice 
and the great battle and this and that. And I was like, you know what? I don't know what this is, but I'm going to plug in <laughs> the Star Wars variables and, and that I understand. So right. the specificity of my understanding will hopefully translate as though I know what the heck they're doing. Um, and uh, part of me wondered, because I'd heard whispers of a Star Wars cartoon, but I didn't know they were doing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew that it luckily was able to be sort of transcribed as a, as a Star Wars narrative. And um, yeah, I, I gave, I made my little soundscape. I sent in an email and then I got a call back Nice. and I wept, um, there. when I, when I walked in and I saw this Twi'lek image on the wall and I thought, um, hold on, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, and then behind the glass, there's Dave Filoni oh. and Greg Weissman. And, um, I, I was okay. Fangirl flailed and uh, I'm a yeah. huge Morris fan. And then I'm like, of course it's called Wolf. Of course. <laughs> yeah. It was right there all along. I, you know, I just never thought I'd be so lucky as to have anything to do with a Star Wars project. So it just didn't occur to me that it literally was Star Wars. And then, um, and then I had to sort of get out of the way right. and, and do my job and fully commit to the choices that I had. I took direction and uh, drove away and I saved the parking uh, pass from that day because I thought this is as good as my life is going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done the same uh, thing. I was so grateful for the callback and I let it go and I didn't think anything of it. Smart. And uh, when I got the call that I had actually gotten the role, I, I, I lost my legs the same way I did when uh, I got cast as Mary Jane in Spectacular Spider-Man, that was another another time where I lower. Yeah. Um, upon hearing the news, and uh, yeah, I I was crying like a baby when I got the call. Rightfully so. Oh man, I was just got to feel it out. Just nerding, nerding hard, and uh, yeah, and it it was just the it was better than I could have ever imagined. It was the most magical experience. I'm so grateful. Yeah. yeah. Talking about like, like you've got, you know, in the voiceover world, as far as I'm concerned, there's a Mount Rushmore extends the entire state. But eh. the two, but the two that stick out, you've got Andrea Romano, you got Dave Filoni. I mean, uh, dude, yeah. and you worked with both. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. I'd say you did all yeah. right. Man. Amazing. I do have to give you props, though, specifically. The actually my desktop wallpaper is Kanan holding back the fire in like his uh. last moments. And How great was that moment? It right? is, I think, it's probably my favorite moment in all of Star Wars animation. And yeah, that mind you, color. yeah, like the the color, yeah. the the music was amazing. But the thing that really sold this scene was you, because uh-huh. Kanan doesn't say anything in the whole scene. Mm. It's all looks and stuff. So like that's all the animators. You know what I mean? So like they have that. You have the music. You have the animators. And you have Hera. So like that entire thing had that emotional impact that stuck with me ever since. And that was because of you. So I have to thank you for making me cry. Um, yeah, that was that wow. was really intense. That I was bet. really well because you know, recorded it, and that was one thing. But to actually see it once it was done was yeah eviscerating. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. Sheesh. And that, I mean, that's another thing that I think a lot of voiceover actors should get even more credit for is the fact that you're in a booth giving that level of emotional mm-hmm. performance. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like it's almost up to the animators and the music to kind of meet you where you're at. And then you all kind of go together and it's like, here's this thing. And it's just an orchestra of emotions. And I can't handle it. So thanks for that. Uh, well, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a masochistic kind of enjoyment. You know, I like, gotcha. I, I understand. Yeah, you get it. You get it. I do. I do. <laughs> and then somehow you're like, how can I maintain this level of greatness? You're like, hmm, Wonder Woman sounds pretty cool. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, you yeah. played Wonder Woman quite a bit. Amazing. Yeah. First time was in uh, Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. Love it. And then so again good. for uh, Flashpoint Paradox. No big deal. And then in the Harley Quinn cartoon that's currently on the DC yes. stream. Yes. And then most recently in Red Sun um, for uh, uh, an anim- another animated film. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just released that that's also I believe streaming on um, on the DC Universe thing, but you can also own it on Blu-ray, and uh, it's uh, based on Mark Miller's uh, Elseworlds tale, and it, it's really pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're into that kind of stuff, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was Wonder Woman one of those like in the same vein of Mary Jane that like you had to find the essence and then bring it out? Or like, cause yeah, I mean, for that's, sure. that's a lot yeah. of pressure. Wonder Woman. Right. Come on. Yeah. Same thing, but again, um, I tried to bring out the best parts of my personality that, that echo her values. And sure. Um, I'm pretty aligned with her worldview. So that, that part wasn't hard. Um, I'm also a martial artist. Love it. Um, of course, and... add martial arts to everything else that you did. I mean, yeah. what is, what is yeah. going on? I'm going back to my VAT thing. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I've I think I've been studying them since 1998. Now it's no been a while. Way. I just love it. Um, Dude. But uh, but yeah, so I was able to sort of uh, just trust those things that live in me and let them manifest in front of the microphone, and then of course have fun. Mm -hmm. So that it's not some sort of um, contrivance, but an actual um, experience of, of of living and being in those those feelings, those emotions, and again those core values sure. that, that she espouses and, and then committing to them fully and, and then sound is created and then there you go. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's the line. That's the process. Yeah. I've noticed that a lot of like my favorite actors and like actor buddies are also martial artists. Mm -hmm. Going back, Ahmed as well. Uh yeah. it, do you find that they complement each other really well? Um I do in the sense that one needs to be in the moment. Yeah. And, uh, if you're in the past or in the future, you might get punched. So yeah. <laughs> you kind of have to really <laughs> stay right here and, uh, and listen and pay attention and focus and so on. Um, and I, I think that's true with acting, uh, to be able to react honestly in the moment. And, um, you know, if someone throws a punch, there's going to be a counter punch. And so if someone throws a line, there's going to be, a reaction to that line and so um it's it's kind of the same thing without words yeah so did you was it also like extra cool on top of cool when like Hera got to do some like cool fight scenes oh, and yeah. stuff definitely so, yeah yeah also where Hera's concerned my father uh was in the air force and he oh, has right a on. yeah he has an open cockpit biplane that he flies and i love going what? and doing aerobatics with him um, so cool. It's like you full blown Snoopy. Like you have yeah. the black <laughs> thing. Um, it's so much fun. So I, I love my dad's friends out at the airport. Um, it just takes it. Pilots are just different breeds. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, I don't know how they manage to have the best senses of humor and then be so <laughs> detail oriented and focused. They're not silly when they're flying. They're completely deathly serious. Right. And there's a level of etiquette in the sky because the mistakes, if mistakes are made, the consequences are catastrophic. Right. So they have this intense ability to focus and micromanage every single detail, every second. Um, I'm not sure I could fly a plane. I, I, <laughs> I'm, a good, I'm a good person, but, uh, I'd be like, Ooh, he needs wait. Oh, oh yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> definitely um, not but, a biplane, <laughs> um, but you know, equally they're some of the most hilarious people I've ever met. Yeah. I think that that, that uh, my dad has a sincere need to fly to get perspective from above and transcend all that is below. And I feel like a lot of that um, impacted my understanding of Hera's need to fly and, and her oh. ability to pilot. So I like that a lot. That's cool. Yeah, that was helpful. How loud is it in one of those planes when you're up oh. there? You have to wear earphones. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty insane. Yeah. Is it cold? Uh, gets cold. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I've never yep. been in one of those. Yeah. It sounds like an experience. Oh my! It yeah. sure is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The G forces yeah. alone in like smaller planes. Oh, yeah. The first time I went up, my dad cut the engine, and I thought, uh, Oh my god! I don't know how to land this. Um, <laughs> what, Dad? Yeah. And, then we went into meow, into a hammerhead, <laughs> and then I couldn't stop laughing. Then I wasn't sure if I was going to puke. Uh, right. But um, but overall, it was a really good time. <laughs> it's like the best coaster ever. <laughs> yeah, what a rush. Yeah. Goodness. See again, no fear. The appendix. They we just there you go. should just get rid of it. <laughs> you know, life is great from then on. Just get yeah. rid of it. <laughs> That's right. You're yeah. not afraid of open Why don't cockpit we just planes. Offer appendectomies, and then yeah. 
promise that everyone's life will change, you know, from there forward. You know what? I know a 10 year old that did it. So See? it worked out. And she became, she became Wonder Woman and Harrison Dula, which, you know, come on. Who doesn't yeah, want to be she those? She that appendix. Yeah. She'd be knitting. She'd be sitting yeah. around knitting. Yeah. I you know, know for a fact you would not be here with that appendix to that nah. right now. No, no, no. So yeah. it, in, a, in a world where, like, I feel like a lot of people are kind of going for uh, voiceover specifically, it's like a thing. Do you have any sort of advice for somebody who wants to get into that kind of work? From like I would, a real I would go to e. Bradley Baker's amazing oh, website. Yes, yes, I yes, want yes. to be a voice actor.com. I would start there. There's yeah. another site called uh, it is the voiceover resource guide, oh. but I believe the website is www.vorg, and uh, that has all sorts of information in terms of making demos and different agencies in LA and New York and all over. And, um, Yuri has an amazing book that uh, he's written. And um, yeah, I think there, there are all sorts of tools online, but I, I refer to D's yeah, website a perfect. bunch. Yeah. It's perfect. It's, a, it's yeah. things that you like, you're, you kind of go there and you're like, is this, is allowed to just give this out? Yeah. <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah. Did nobody stop it's him? so helpful. I mean, there are, there are things you can practice on there. There are, um, I mean, he gives you every single thing that you need to know. Um, any question is answered there. So I, I, I would go there first. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Do you have any like tips of things that like you might not expect? It's like, if you're going to go on this journey, bring water, you know, have anything like that? Well, I would have alternate hobbies Ooh. Uh, because I think if there are other things that bring one joy, it takes the focus on off the results of. I think that's acquiring great. a voiceover career. Yes. So, you know, whether it's horseback riding or pottery or um, any arts and crafts that you might enjoy. Right. Um, Trash sculpting. I'm very crafty. Um, mm -hmm. Love me some crafts. Yeah. There you go. Why not? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, I just like little little things that that keep the pilot going inside because I think that ultimately when we're standing in front of the microphone, if we're not fulfilled spiritually it, the sound that comes out of us is nothing anyone wants to have anything to do with it sounds broken or or, or disturbed or something so totally agree. i would i would keep questing and uh really staying true to oneself whatever that looks like however you find your voice um and find joy i would say that's that's the best thing you can give to your voiceover career everyone i know who's successful in voice acting has something else that they love and uh, and when they go to voiceover jobs, it's all anyone wants to hear about. Like, well, when are you doing this again? Well, when yeah. can I do this again? Um, it just it it I think it helps people roam the earth with joy, and and that's you you can't purchase that. It just it's it's just a kind of a magic thing that happens when someone is fulfilled. It's almost like when you're in love, everyone says, "Oh, you look ten years younger." Yeah, you're you glowing. Know? Fall in love with yourself. Yeah, about, there you go. Bring that, bring that glow to the microphone, and then the rest is easy. Hell yeah, that's that may be the best advice I've ever heard. It's like <laughs> it's like if you start from the in, it'll affect the out. There you go. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just like that, you know, we've been talking for an hour already. Oh my goodness! Boom, Look at boom, that. boom! Yeah. Oh, so you know, I, what can I say, Mr. Colbert? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Colbert, please, and differentiate. It, yes. Of yeah, course. I don't want us getting mixed up because we look exactly the same. Uh, isn't uh, that crazy? Yeah. I know it's weird to me too. No relation either. Uh, but <laughs> before I uh, before I let you go, I have to ask: Where can people find you online to mirror my sentiments that you're amazing? Oh, bless. Well, uh, on Twitter, my handle is at Van Marshall, Smart. and then on Instagram because there's some other lovely lady with at Van Marshall, and uh, <laughs> she's really cool. But um, you'll find me on Instagram. At Vanessa Marshall, eleven thirty-eight. Oh, uh, nice. Oh, George Lucas, there on the end. Um, Love it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, come say hello and uh, let's be friends. Yeah. Um, and there's there's a a fan page on Facebook as well that I interact on, but I spend most of my time on Instagram and Twitter. So come say hi. There you go. Um, but there's also streaming on DC right now. I did a role playing game with uh, Freddie Prince Jr. and yes. Sam Whitman, the DM and. Claire Grant and Xavier and um, we 
uh, are playing a, a DC role playing, and the first episode just dropped, and uh, it is hilarious. It takes place in the '80s, and the '80s music oh, is the to die for. Yeah, we. It's really, really well done. I'm. I watched an episode last night, and I was laughing so hard. Um, I'm really proud of it, and and uh, well, that Freddie uh, put that together, directed by John Brody. He's a genius. The um, greatest. Yeah. So. Anyway, for for a good time, check out the DC streaming uh, All Stars game. It's yeah. a good time. Yeah, I'm doing a bunch of other things. I hey, love I love <laughs> Keep it. Keep it fun. Keep it fun and fall in love with yourself. Exactly. Boom. Boom. <laughs> and I Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.